Hi everyone, my name's Dylan and I do graphics card pricing analysis in Australia to show you the best buying options available at any given time. And I wanted to do an update here because AMD have just released the new Radeon RX 7800 XT and 7700 XT graphics cards. And we now have Australian prices and you can even purchase and pre-order the cards online. So. Let's take a look at my uh, regular price guide and see where these cards fit into the performance hierarchy and where they fit into uh, and whether they affect the best purchase decision um, that you can make when buying your graphics card. So let's take a look first of all. I just want to take a look at how the prices have turned out. So if we take a look here at my pricing list, this is a list of all of the uh, available graphics cards in Australia with their best price available. So I take these prices from, um, this is basically the best price I can find online. I look at PC Part Picker, Static Ice, Oz Bargain, eBay, and another of other places to find the best prices available. So first of all, let's just go through, well, what are the prices? So the 7700 XT is the lower cost option that AMD have released. And this one is coming in at $770 Australian. So this one can be purchased from Centercom. It's got free delivery as well, which is great. $769. It's a Sapphire Pulse model. Um, Sapphire is a very reputable brand and uh, Pulse is kind of their... Um, you know, co most cost-effective version of their cards that they um, release, but um, you know, have no doubt it is uh, a really good card. I've got a Pulse card myself. So these cards are coming out at 12 gigabytes and I think a pretty good price point um, for the performance they're delivering. Uh, this could be, you know, this could turn out to be a pretty popular card here in Australia. Um, so how about the 7800 XT? Well, that is coming out at $874 Australian, and this one is available from Amazon. Um, and there's a few available from Amazon at really good prices at the moment. Uh, so this one is a gigabyte model. Uh, it's a Radeon RX 7800 XT for $874. Um, that's, uh, that's a pretty good purchase. It's the cheapest one currently available online. So. There you go. Amazon sometimes does have its wins. So aside from the new cards that have come out, um, how has this affected the marketplace? Well, what, what's happened is I've noticed the 6800 and the 6800 XT have actually dropped in price by about $40 to $50 um, since these cards came out which now puts them um, priced a little bit below their counterparts um, of the 7800 XT and 7700 XT respectively. So the 6800 XT is now $847. Um, this one is available from Amazon as well. Um, it's an XFX model and it's, there it is, $847. And the 6800 is uh, $752. And this one is also available from Amazon and and it's also an XFX card. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind is uh, although the um, 6800 um, is priced pretty similar to the 7700, it's a little bit cheaper, um, it does have more memory at 16 gigs uh, as opposed to 12 gigs, um, and they perform pretty similarly. But as we get into this, um, you're going to see there are a lot more benefits to the 7700 XT, which I'll get into. So aside from AMD, you should also be looking into, well, where are NVIDIA's nearest competitors? Um, and the only card that's competing anywhere near either of these is the RTX 4070 for $889, which is uh, $15 more than the 7800 XT. So if you wanted to spend another $15, you can pick up this 4070, um, and that will give you better ray tracing performance. Uh, but we'll get into the comparisons of these a little bit later. I just want to show you guys the price at the outset. Um, on the other hand, with the 68, with the 7700 XT rather, at $770, um, there really isn't any competitor at that price point. Um, the only competitor is the actual 6800 from AMD, and the closest NVIDIA card is the 3070 Ti, but that is only an 8 gigabyte card, so I wouldn't even be considering that. Um, you know, if you go a bit further down, you've got the 4060 Ti 16 gig, but that's now in a completely different price range of $670. So there really is no competitor close to the 7700 XT aside from the 6800 itself. 
So in my charts, you can see I've color coded the NVIDIA 4070 green. The new Radeon cards are red and the previous generation 6000 series Radeon cards are orange. So as we take a look through this, that's just there to help you navigate with your eyes. Um, now we're going to move across my charts now. So at this current chart is just priced highest or lowest out of all the cards. But as we move across to my next chart, this is, uh, or, this is in order of actual raster performance. So the best raster performing card at the top and the worst raster performing card at the bottom. Um, but I've still got the memory and the Australian prices listed against each one. Um, this is ranked at 1440p ultra settings uh, based on the TOMS hardware um, GPU ranks. So let's narrow down here to the uh, new cards. We've got the RX 7800 XT and out of all the uh, cards and competitors that I've mentioned, that one is actually at the top of the list. It's the best performing raster card that you can get out of those cards which I've mentioned. Um, that one sits there at $874. Um, the next one down in raster performance is the 6800 XT at $847, just a little bit less. And then the next one down is the RTX 4070, which actually costs more than the 7800 XT, but doesn't perform as well in raster. However, there are other pros for this card, which we'll get into soon. Now, if you jump down a few steps, um, the uh, previous generation 3080 12 gig um, had better raster performance at this point, um, but the uh, RX 7700 XT is next at $770, and just below that is the 6800. Um, if we go any steps below, we're dropping down to like 8 gigabyte cards, and then all the way down to the next 12 gig card is the 6750, which is only $530. Um, but we've dropped a fair bit down in performance by this point. So um, now, that is the raster performance, but if we go across to my next chart, this is going to show you how they compete with each other in ray tracing. And you'll see that the gap between them is much wider. Um, so all the way down here, we have the RX 6800. And the reason for this is that uh, AMD cards just don't perform as well at ray tracing than NVIDIA, than their NVIDIA counterparts. So um, the reason these are more spread out in the, in the performance hierarchy now is more NVIDIA cards have crept up into these places and taken the performance crown in these places because NVIDIA cards are just designed better for ray tracing. However, um, the main takeaway here is with the RTX 4070. As you, can, as you remember, this is priced pretty closely to the 7800 XT, but as you can see, it performs much better in ray tracing compared to the 7800 XT. Although the 7800 XT performs better in raster, okay? So just keep that in mind. However, although the AMD card is better at raster, it's not much better at raster. Whereas the NVIDIA card is actually much better at ray tracing uh, for only a little bit more money. So in my opinion, the NVIDIA card in this case is actually the better purchase. Um, now, there are some other things to keep in mind, like it's only a 12 gig card compared to the 16 of the AMD card, but it also has uh, better features like DLSS, frame generation, which is actually already on the market. Um, you know, it, it's uh, better at ray tracing, like I mentioned. So there's pros and cons between all of them, but I think um, the 4070 outweighs the cons. And in this price bracket, I would be purchasing the 4070 uh, rather than the 7800 XT. However, at the lower price, uh, going down to the 7700 XT, at this point, I'm looking less at ray tracing and more at, well, how much raster performance can I get? And I think the 78, 7700 XT is uh, the best purchase at its current price point that you can get. So for around $750, um, it is actually the best card, I think, currently available. Now, if you've got an option between, uh, you know, the previous gen AMD cards and these new 7000 series cards, um, and you and as I've shown in my performance charts, they perform pretty similar and they price pretty similar. You might wonder, well, why would I pick one over the other? 
Um, there's a number of reasons that the 7000 series is a better purchase than the 6000 series um, and that comes down to its architecture. So the 7000 series cards are on what's called the RDNA 3 architecture as opposed to the RDNA 2 of the previous generation and what that means is they get a number of uh, improvements uh, like better ray tracing performance, they have better power efficiency, uh, they come with DisplayPort 2.1 output, they have um, AV1 encoding, and they'll also just generally get support for a longer period of time into the future from AMD as um, a more recent release uh, architecture. So you can expect uh, driver updates for those cards to come out for longer, and over time the 7000 series cards will, will improve a lot in performance, uh, whereas the 6000 series cards will get left behind at some point. So, um, you know, although on paper they look kind of similar, um, the architecture of the 7000 series does make it a better choice um, if you're just looking at AMD cards. Now I want to talk a little bit about this narrative uh, online that all the uh, most popular reviewers um, have, which is that there's there's no point purchasing the 7700 XT because the 7800 XT is only fifty dollars more. Well, you, you know the problem with this is most reviewers online, even the Australian reviewers, they all talk in US prices, um, and this is why um, I got a little bit fed up of of watching reviewers online. Um, because most, a lot of the information, when as soon as they start talking about pricing, it's just irrelevant for Australians. So let's let's take a look um, at these cards in question at how the pricing has turned out in Australia. So let's start by looking at the 7700 XT it was supposed to be 450 US, which would translate to $703 Australian as a direct conversion. Um, but it's landed on our shelf at $770, which is a $67 premium over the direct currency conversion. Okay, now you might think, well, that like, why do we have to pay $67 more than the direct currency conversion? Well, there's a number of reasons for that. Um, there's shipping fees, there's taxes, um, there's, you know, retailers, there's um, the importers who take a cut, um, there's the, the high Australian salaries. There's a lot of reasons that we pay more for our on-shelf prices. So actually a $67 premium is actually pretty good. Um, if you go and watch my NVIDIA um, video called The Green Glutton of Gaming, you'll see that um, we've paid upwards of thousands of dollars uh, in premium over the um, direct currency conversion rate for some NVIDIA cards. So $67 is nothing. Now, when you look at the 7800 XT, the more expensive card, that one is retailing for 499 US RRP, um, which is a $50 premium over the um, $50 US premium over the 7700 XT. Um, directly converted, that comes to $781 Australian, but our on-shelf price is $874 Australian, which is a $93 premium. Now compared to the other model, it's only a $67 premium to the direct currency conversion, but the uh, 7800 is a $93 premium to the direct currency conversion. Um, and this is just one of the reasons why uh, the US uh, MSRPs are just completely irrelevant to us. And anytime you watch reviews which um, mention uh, US sale prices, you just got to keep in mind it doesn't mean anything to Australians because we don't usually get anything like that here and it makes our market completely different. Um, where this lands us is like I was saying, um, the, all the US reviewers, all the most popular online graphics card reviewers, they're all saying there's no point buying the 7700 XT because you can just get the 7800 XT for $50 more. But as, I've, as I'm showing you right here, it's actually $104 more Australian, which is a significant amount. It is actually enough to make you stop and decide, well, which one can I afford? It's not the same as the US. Um, and you know, the other thing, the other problem with US reviewers is they're comparing the 4060 Ti to these cards because in the US that is similarly priced. Um, but over here, again, that doesn't make sense because as I've shown here, the price of the 4060 Ti is actually far below these new cards. So it's actually in a different price category completely. The only Nvidia card 
that is competing anywhere near these is the RTX 4070, which actually is a good purchase in this sense. It makes sense to buy the 4070. Now, I'm not saying US reviewers do a bad job. They do great for their market, but I'm just saying that it's a lot of it is irrelevant for Australians when we watch it. Um, and, you know, I'm the same. I love to watch uh, reviews of graphics cards. You know, I watch all the channels. I watch Gamers Nexus. I watch Hardware Unboxed. I watch Daniel Owen. But you just got to remember, you know, as soon as they start talking about pricing and what makes sense to buy, it's irrelevant for us Australians and we need to look elsewhere for that. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. So in conclusion, what I've shown is that the Australian market is much different than the US market. Um, and this is why the US reviews are unhelpful to us. And we need to take a look and choose for ourselves and look at our own data, our own prices uh, to make our purchase decisions. Um, I've also shown that the 7700 XT is the best card you can currently buy for around $770 and the RTX 4070 is the best card you can buy for around $880 as opposed to the 7800 XT. Um, so I hope this has been a helpful update for you guys. Um, Stick around if you want uh, more regular uh, GPU pricing updates. I do this on a regular basis. Just hit the subscribe button and I hope to see you next time.